Hi, everyone. I'm Barbara Beck, host of Welcome Home on Good Life 45. And you're listening to my good friends, Fritz, Mike, and Tina, right here on God Stories Radio, bringing hope, comfort, and encouragement to the world through the power of the Christian testimony. Keep listening for a big blessing from the Lord. Welcome, everyone, to this edition of God Stories Radio. This is session 280. I'm Fritz. I'm Mike. And we got Joe and Chris tonight. No Tina. No Tina. Tina's got to work. Tina's working. Yeah. She's wow. working. I know, huh? Can you believe it? It's demonic. But here we are, Thursday but night. Here we are, Thursday night under the lights. Two mm-hmm. really good friends and comrades. Mm-hmm. We missed a couple of Thursdays. Yeah, we did. Yep. Yeah. How you doing, Mikey? Um, What's the latest? Latest people thing. are inquiring minds want to know. Really? Well, um, prayers are still welcome. Um, still, I still have. I have to go for a pet scan. Dotate is what it's called. Why do they give it such a French sounding? I don't know. I think dotate is the same. The stuff dotate. that they actually give you. Oh, hmm. and um, it's not a side dish. <laughs> No, but um oh, the Dota Tay. Uh my hope, my prayer is when I go in for that uh PET scan that the the mass would be gone. That's what I'm talking about. Uh-huh. So if anybody's praying, thank you very much for your prayers. And if you're gonna continue, thank you, thank you, thank you. Pray the bold prayer that it's gone. Oh, you're looking good. So Jim into that. So Junior will have a draw. A jaw-dropping moment. Junior being, who's Junior? My son. There you go. Yeah. All right. Now you know. Joe Ormsby, what's going on over there? Hey, hey, good to be here. It's good to have you, buddy. What's happening? Not a whole lot. Work's been, uh, work's been busy, so it's been nice getting back in the, in the routine and the swing and seeing normal return. I got a thing in the, my email today that from Marriott that said, uh, You'd be perfect applicant for this job. We think you'd be great for this job. Oh, but perfect. I never could see the job. <laughs> so maybe probably a scam. Probably a pool boy. <laughs> Dishwasher. <laughs> you know. Uh-huh. Although those people are very important. I'm not knocking them. Absolutely. You know it. Tip those waitresses. They're working hard for you. Yeah. Pastor Chris Tabone in the house tonight. <laughs> How are you? How are you? <laughs> That's funny. Um, I appreciate it. I had that it. all queued up for you. Right? I see that. One more time. <laughs> no, well, thank you. Thank you. It's always an honor. It's always a pleasure to be amongst uh, family and friends, to be here and to share and to talk and to hopefully uh, bring some hope and inspiration to um, whoever's listening tonight or maybe later on on playback. Um, it's an honor to be with you guys. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, in our world, uh, there's, there's a lot of good up, ups and downs. We could talk more about that in, in a minute. But, you know, for the most part right now, things are things are good. Um, I, I've got two daughters. They are in elementary school, third grade, fourth grade, and they are ready for the school year to be done. And I think I am as well. <laughs> I don't, I don't know don't about surprise me. I don't know about you, Joe. I know you got young kids like myself, but this has been a weird school year. It has, right? It, it's you know, I think of I think of all the odd, the oddness and the oddities of what it was like when I was in school, and those look refreshing by comparison to what the last year and a half of of you know formal education has looked like in in our public school system predominantly because we've been living in and coming out of you know the, this covid world mm-hmm. so i'm i'm ready for the summer to hit where we can settle into a bit of normalcy and kind of find some refreshment in the midst of that and then uh tackle next 
school year when mm-hmm. uh, when next school year comes upon us. But I'm I'm just ready for the summer for a little bit of a break. Just, just keep in mind though, there's a lot of states mm-hmm. that still oh very true not oh, going man, to we school. Got, we have a good there's My, no yeah. doubt about it. My in-laws live in Michigan and, and, you know, it's night and day difference between Michigan and Florida where my mother-in-law came down just, just a few weeks ago to visit and they're all still predominantly on lockdown with, with masks, um, you know, required, you know, any and everywhere that you go. Mm-hmm. However, you know, with the, the new CDC guidelines and, and whatnot, I'm sure we're going to start seeing some, some things changing for the better. Praise God. Uh, for that, but yeah, you're absolutely right. There are there are places still in our country and, and heck in our world that um, are still a long way off from returning mm. to what what a normal looks like. I don't think we're ever going to go back to no, normal, you gonna see but we're going to have a new normal where we a feel comfortable. Yes. And, and I think that's the key: is you know when do when do we begin to feel comfortable again? Hmm. I don't know about that. I don't know. God is, he's just shaking and shaking and shaking to get people to, you know, to look towards him Mm -hmm. is what it is. Mm -hmm. The church, especially. There's a lot of, there's a lot of need in our culture right now for a, for a revival, right? Let's use a church term. Amen. It's coming. Um, You know, I'm, I'm a pastor in the denomination that, you know, its entire roots was built on, on revivalism. You know, the, mm-hmm. the, the Wesleyan roots of, you know, John Wesley, who sends Francis Asbury to America and Francis Asbury rides around on a horseback preaching the gospel and, you know, revival followed. Um, and, and in the midst of revivalism, there's a lot of, uh, you know, things that, that were positive that happened. And I think we are on the precipice of, you know, some sort of new revival. Not necessarily new, but um, a reawakening of a revival that's needed to bring forth, you know, the hope of Christ into every interaction and every sector of society where Mm -hmm. he seems to be absent. You know, it's interesting you say that. God is something that was so taboo to talk about Mm -hmm. pre-COVID for a long time. And it's been surprising to me in a good way how many of my friends and peers at, at mm-hmm. work engage in conversations and, and, and they're, they're high level and, and sometimes superficial, but the fact that church and God is even coming up in dialogue in those professional settings is encouraging to yeah, me. Good point. That, that it's becoming less and less taboo to have that conversation. You, you're absolutely right. You, you've, I don't know if you've noticed, I've, I've been trying to pay attention, but it's hard. Um, if you if you remind me, I'll come back to a different thought I had earlier on today. Um, but it, it's interesting because there's this this shifting in society, and it's been going on subtly for for some time now, where people are identifying with spirituality. They're they're finding amongst this millennial uh, generation uh, a good number of individuals who, while they might not identify with organized religion are definitely, to an extent, identifying with spirituality. So you see, and I've, I've noticed, you know, looking at some of the trends, I, I see things in different worlds of people just investigating. So when you are willing to investigate, you're willing to ask questions. And if you're willing to investigate and ask questions, then you're going to have more dialogues in different settings around God, around Jesus, around you know, um, different faiths outside of, you know, the Judeo Christian faith, but there is at least a willingness to, to explore and talk. Um, so that, that starts, that starts kind of the, um, the conversation. But something I was thinking about earlier today on that, that line is, uh, been really thinking about just that, you know, the conversations that we're having on this grand scale of like everybody's thinking about this, everybody's talking about this and all these things are going on and, and I was thinking, like, what are what are the conversations and the thoughts and the, the the things that are going on on my local level, my local like smaller scale, and just trying to be more observant to those spiritual questions people are asking here, you know, in in our church or in our community, 
when I'm at my daughter's school or I'm out at the soccer field or, or, or whatever the case may be, like on this small scale, right around me, like what's the questions that are being asked? Who are the people that are seeking? Because if we're paying attention, I'm off, I'm off in left, left field, I'm sorry. But if, <laughs> if we're paying attention and we're talking, we're exploring, we're investigating and we're doing this with other people here locally... I think I think this is where revival starts. Let's bring this full circle. I think this is where revival starts. Is it starts in our backyard? It doesn't start, you know, at at some big, you know, massive mega conference where you know, mm-hmm. like no, it starts yeah. with like twenty people gathered together in a room praying and just seeking God and seeking His face and telling their neighbor and loving their community. And revival starts at a small setting, like a small flame will will potentially be birthed into a massive fire. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm into that. Well, you're, you're, you're a hundred percent right because at a big conference at a mega gathering, it, it's a group of like-minded people together. And mm-hmm. frankly, we're right. And, and, and it's great that we're there together, but if we're only sharing it with one another in a setting like that, mm-hmm. and then we, we punch out and we go home and, and go back to our normal everyday life, no, re- no, no spark, no fire, no revival will happen. So, so I think you're yeah. right. Though it seems small mm-hmm. and insignificant at times to have that little conversation, you're yep. planting a seed. You're planting a seed. You're planting a seed. Yep. And eventually, that will grow, and that will turn into the revival you're talking about. Relational, I, you know, yeah. interaction is everything, and that's what COVID took from us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's why people suffered the way they did. You know. Um, Joe, you, you bring up a great point that planting of seeds. We've got a, a young man on our, our staff. I was joking with him. I'm going to say this and I hope I don't offend anybody, but I said, you know, Hey, you need to be a POS. And he was like, what? <laughs> I said, yeah, planter of seeds that like everywhere you go, you are planting a little seed and you are, you are leaving this thought, this little kernel and, and coming back to it and watering it and, and, and just allowing it to germinate and, and grow into something because if we can plant seeds, we can make impact. But the problem with planting seeds is it takes work. Mm -hmm. And not only does it take work, it takes patience Mm -hmm. because you have to plant it. You have to water it. You have to nurture it. You have to come back. You have to check on it. Um, I think, I think one of the, 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 the tragedies of our, our young generation, you know, I'll include myself in this is, um, we're, we're the fast food generation where, you know, we drive up, we pick it up, we eat in the car. We're done. Like we're now, now, now. Microwave yeah. society. Right. Like we've, we've, um, to the disregard of delayed gratification, we've just kind of given into instant gratification. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I think, I think we might miss a revival. We might miss a, a miracle if we're, um, we're, we're, moving on to the next and we're not patient in it. So we got to plant seeds. We got to go slow. Mm-hmm. Well, I think the Lord built in seed time and harvest in mm-hmm. everything. Right. But you know, it's usually not the same person that plants the seed that actually gets, I mean, a person goes down the road and somebody else does something so true, and watering so and, and so on and yep. the Holy spirit and so on. It takes time. Mm-hmm. Really does. I think revival started with that haircut you got over there. <laughs> Looking pretty sharp there. I appreciate that. Uh, every now and then you just got to uh, get get the hairs cut um, because they they start growing in weird directions when you don't. Are you at liberty to uh, share your good news with the GSR listeners? Sure. Um, you know, I think I think we've had some some good banter, but you know the the beautiful thing that I've come to appreciate about God Stories Rest uh, Radio is that. In the midst of it all, you talk about the Christian testimony. Mm. And each and every one of us, regardless of who we are, has a unique testimony. Amen. Our story is unique to us. God in his sovereignty has called us to walk through the uniqueness of our own personal story. And while doing so, some of us are gifted in unique ways. Um, Some are called to um, different offices. Uh, different vocations and professions, different callings. Um, And don't discount your calling or your vocation because you're not 
something else. God made you, you and uniquely you, and you are the only you you could ever be. So don't ever discount the uniqueness of the calling that God has placed on your life and understand that God is going to use each and every one of us in, in a unique way. All, all that to be said, you know, I, I have an, a, a unique twist in my own personal testimony where a couple months back now, um, I was approached and asked to pray about um, leaving my current church, the position that I've, I've been in for the last near four years, church that I've been on staff at for nine years. Um, first as in my first five years as the youth pastor, and then the last four years as an associate pastor, um, leading a community, a Sunday morning worshiping community called Awaken Church. And I was asked if I would pray about and, and seek God for becoming the senior pastor of a um, new new to me church, not necessarily a new church, um, but a new to me church out in the, uh, the Coco Titusville area. So that was a phone call I got from our district superintendent. Uh, so the way our system uh, in the United Methodist Church works is we are broken up into different conferences. Um, we here in Florida are part of the Florida conference. Unless you're up in the panhandle, then you're just really in Alabama, but you don't want to admit it. Um, <laughs> so our Florida conference is broken down into then several different districts. And every district has a superintendent who kind of helps give, you know, um, leadership uh, from the conference to the, to the local church. So our district superintendent is a really nice guy, a uh, gentleman by the name of Bob called me and said, Hey, I want you to think about, pray about becoming the senior pastor of this little church, you know, average, the average size church in America is somewhere between 60 and 80 members. This church is right there between 80 and hundred members. So average size congregation, uh, they, their senior, their current senior pastor was, uh, stepping into a new role. He was going to be a part of this new network of churches where he and another person were going to lead three ch- smaller churches together and which which left a vacancy at this church um so that phone call on thursday happened and he said hey i need you to pray about it but i want an answer by tomorrow okay. big mega life changing decision and i had less than 24 hours so i pushed back i said hey can i can i have through the weekend can i can i call you on sunday and let you know um, and he said, absolutely. Um, but he, well, you know, Joseph went from the prison to the palace in less than 24 hours. That is true. Uh, God can, God can do crazy things. And I'll be honest. I knew in 24 hours what my decision was going to be. So that was Thursday, Friday morning. We dropped our kids off at school. We got in the car and we drove from here in, in our South Lake Claremont area all the way out to Coco. It's roughly about an hour and seven hour, nine minute drive when you do it legally. Yeah. Um, you know, no, no lead footed disclaimer over here. I won't say how long it took me to get there, but we got, we got over to that <laughs> side of, side of town. And we began to explore. We drove around the church a couple of times. And, and as I was driving around the church, I was actually um, reminded of Mark Batterson. Mark Batterson pastors National Community Church up in Washington, D.C. And he wrote this phenomenal book called The Circle Maker about Honey, the circle maker and how you, you, know, you pray around things. And we drove around the church. And I just kept thinking about, you know, walk around the church and pray around the church. And um, so we did that. And we we found out that the church owns a parsonage. A parsonage is, is a home that the church owns that the pastor gets to live in. So we found out where the power the parsonage was and we drove over to it. We drove by, you know, there's still the current pastor living there. So we're just kind of like we did that slow creep mm-hmm. where you just kind of like roll by and you're like, that's the house, that's the house, that's the house. Oh, they have they have a gate. That's good. We have a dog. Okay. And we're we're past the house and um, we drove down the road, we found Target, we, we put, we put in Starbucks right on the, on the app and went to Starbucks, got a coffee, walked around Target. And, uh, my wife, Carrie and I just, we looked at each other and we said, this is a really unique opportunity. Um, and we knew we were going to say yes. Um, but I still wanted, because I had gotten the, the opportunity to wait until Sunday 
Um, well, you had to weigh in the Starbucks distance, you know, that's a, <laughs> that could have been a deal breaker. It could have, the, the, <laughs> you know, the, the amount of coffee I drink is definitely, um, uh, it's insane. I will totally miss you. Yeah. I, I really will. I saw a cool picture the other day of, um, what, what was it? 15, 15, 15 coffee makes its way to Europe. 15, 17, Martin Luther starts the Protestant Reformation. And the meme was, um, uh, watch out for a well caffeinated pastor. And the dates might have been wrong. I I I don't remember yeah. off the top of my head. It's it's late. And but so anyway, Saturday my sister in law actually wound up coming into town. So we sat with um with with my wife's younger sister and her husband and we all talked and we prayed and we didn't tell our girls. We actually wound up not telling our girls for about several weeks after we made the decision. But Sunday, I called Bob while in the parking lot of the church I've been serving at here in Claremont for the last nine years. And I said, you can count me in. And we were doing something unique that day. We were doing this outdoor worship service that Sunday morning. And I just remember it was awesome. We had a really good crowd. I mean, there was, there was a good number of people here at the awakened service. I'm outdoors preaching. I finished preaching and I turned to my wife and she looked at me and she was like, are you okay? And I'm like, I don't remember a single thing I just said. <laughs> like I was in <laughs> such a fog because of this big, you know, life changing decision. So the Monday after that, I had uh, spring break. So I spent the week on spring break. I mean, I went into the office Monday to turn in some paperwork. But by Monday afternoon, I was on spring break with my kids for the week. And it was a great time to process. You know, for anybody out there who's listening, you know, if you are faced with any sort of big decision, you know, finding the time to reflect is so vital, but also we surrounded ourselves with other people who were close to us, who loved us, could, um, you know, see, see it from different perspectives as well. It was so helpful just to have that dialogue and that conversation. So, you know, for anybody else out there, you know, bring people into big decisions, allow them to speak, you know, truth Mm -hmm. into Mm -hmm. it that you might not be seeing. So, we spent the week on spring break, came back, and I talked with the senior pastor of the church, with Doug, and told him what was going on. And he was excited for me. And we started praying about it. And, and over the next few weeks, we began to tell our staff. I talked with you know Fritz, who's on staff with us, talked with Joe, um, who uh, is, is part of our production team, kind of. He's quasi. He, he he's more important than he lets on. Um, and and yeah, he's quasi in charge. Pretty much, he calls the shots. Which thank that he you, does. Thank you. And uh, um, very well, I might add. So, <laughs> so as we begin to tell some of our staff, we you know I talked to Mac, who um, is our youth minister, and we told the staff one day at staff meeting, and we started to celebrate and reminisce and. And it was interesting. There was this moment in the midst of all of it where when you, when you're confronted with this, cause now it's, you know, it's April and, and this change comes in July. I had to ask myself, and I, I don't remember if I talked with you about this Fritz, but I was like, Oh my goodness, I think I'm having buyer's remorse. Yeah. Like, oh wow. No. So I had said, yes, I was gearing up. I was getting ready. And, you know, things that awaken were, were good, but like we had one of those Sunday mornings where it was great. And then it was Easter and it was insane. I mean, we had our largest in-person attendance in our near four year history. I mean, we, oh well, yeah, it was packed out there. Yeah. We, we were well over, you know, our biggest, you know, dreams at that, at that moment, we always had lofty dreams and aspirations for what that community could become because I think God is definitely in the business of doing something in and through it. And it's just a privilege to be a part of it. But after Easter, I was like, oh my goodness, am I having buyer's remorse? I mean, like if I stay here, we have all these people, we could do all these things. It's going to be amazing. And, and then Monday came and, and Tuesday came and, it, it, reality sits, 
settles back in. And that even though in the midst of, of what you might perceive as buyer's remorse of like, what am I giving up? Oh my gosh, is it, you know, when God is bringing you to something, God is going to see you through something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Amen. I, I truly believe that, that God has brought me to this new opportunity. And as a result, he's going to see me through it. And he wouldn't have brought me here um, if he didn't have a plan. Um, for some of us, we think, oh, you know, that's great. You know, maybe you're sitting out there listening and going, that's great for you. You're, you're going to be a pastor. You know, you were qualified. I, I really think, and I agree with, you know, people who are far smarter than me who said it first that God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. And the calling that was placed on my life that was qualified through the fact that God is the one who's called me, who gifts me and walks with me. And I just have to be you know, humble enough to live into the fact that um, it's not all on me. So as, as I've just kind of been walking through this, I'm really, I'm really excited for this opportunity um, this new opportunity to just live into something new that God is that God is calling me to. So you know, all that to be said, as I think about you know the power of testimony, this is this is a change. Um, this is a change in testimony. Mm-hmm. I've been in ministry since 2002. Um, for the longest time, I always thought I would just do youth ministry. Until the moment where God says, I want you to plant a church and we planted Awaken. And I pastored that and I thought, man, I'm going to give this years. This is going to be amazing. We're going to, and then God just kind of goes, mm, all right, I got, I got something else for you. Uh-huh. And being willing to live into that, that uniqueness, but it's this transform, transformation of a, of a testimony to live into and be and understand who God has you know, created me and by default, all of us uniquely to be. Yeah, it's pretty cool because uh, I know me kind of looking in from the, the stained glass window, so to speak, having worked with you for the last couple of years and and knowing some uh, pretty interesting situations you were put into, it, it makes sense now. Mm-hmm. It all, That all, the whole thing makes sense. And it's so cool that I get to sit back and witness mm-hmm. Uh, those learned experience that yeah. that you take with you that it was all in preparation for this for this Absolutely. time. You know, from where I sit, you know, um, I think you deserve it. Well, thank you. Yeah, likewise. I mean, from just watching, you know, listening to you and coming in here and preaching and so on and so forth, I think you're. I I think you deserve it. Well, thank you, man. I think I, you're ready. I appreciate that. You know, something, something that Fritz said is, I think, you know, maybe, maybe if you're listening tonight, maybe this is what you need to hear. Um, it wasn't nine years of mountaintop experiences. Um, and I think I've learned just as much in the, in the good moments being on staff as I did in the, um, in the crappy moments. And I've had an opportunity to learn and grow, um, and, and, you know, take ownership of the times where I fell short. Um, I, I've had to look in the mirror and recognize that, you know, n- that not every argument or every situation that happened was solely on the shoulders of another person that, you know, I, I played a part in some of these as well. But I've had to learn from, from my growth and my shortcomings, but also from the way other people grew or didn't grow. And I learned just as much from our successes as I did from, from our failures. But I also learned a lot from our actions as much as I learned from our inactions. Amen. Well, you know, one of the other things that, that I heard was the buyer's remorse that you, mm-hmm. you felt for a moment there. And it reminded me what Mikey was saying before we got into you sharing your news. And, and it's a great example of you're not always going to plant the seed and harvest at yeah. the end. You've planted the seed yep. and now you have to trust that God set you up correctly and that God will take care of the rest of what you're leaving behind and hey, put the right to people that, to water and to harvest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that, oh man, that, that'll cut you to the core. Ooh. Yeah. Chew on that one. Because the reality is, is in, in professions like ministry and teaching and, you know, it's a lot of non for profits like social work. We don't always get to see the end result. 
being in youth ministry, that was one of the things that frustrated the pants off me, right? (laughs) My golly, there were so many kids where we invested like our life into them and then they would disappear or they would graduate. By the grace of God, they would graduate. They'd go to college and, you know, and, and, and you wouldn't know, did, did, did something good happen? Like we don't see mm-hmm. every now and then, you know, the longer you're in it, every now and then you get to see a few kids come back. Like some of my really older kids, like I had a young lady, I think it was a junior or senior, my first year on staff here. You know, she went on, she graduated. No, she had to have been a sophomore my first year because she wound up by year... Her senior year, she was going to miss her trip. Anyway, regardless, she just reached out to me a few weeks ago, maybe two months ago, and was like, hey, I'm engaged. We're getting married. Will you do our premarital counseling? And then will you will you officiate our wedding? I was like, absolutely. And being able to be a part of that story with them. like mm-hmm. You don't always get to see those moments, but mm-hmm. when you do, it's, it's awesome. It reminds you of why you do what you do. Yep. But more often than not, like, you know, in teaching and social work and ministry, we we plant lots of seeds, but we don't always get to see how those seeds take root or what fruit they begin to bear. Mm-hmm. And there's a there's a lot of trust that has to go in at that at that point, right? The, yeah. Tying it back to why we're here tonight and what we're talking about. Yeah. Yep. It's, that you did uh, your best. Yeah. And that and that he that he's got this, right. that he he's used me as much as he needs me in this moment. Mm-hmm. And while I'm proud of the work that I've done and I'm moving on, yeah. he's still smarter and stronger than me and he's going to be okay without me. Yeah. And well, there's a, there's a, a humbleness, a, you know, a humility factor in that, that at the end of the day, it's, it's not about us. Right. You know, the more that we try to make things about us, the more we're setting ourselves up for failure. Mm. You know, and I and I said this when we when we announced to the to the congregation that I was stepping down and we were going to kind of reformat what we're doing. I I made it a point to to point out the fact that I've tried my best to never make it about me. I, I viewed myself in the role as being you know the the, the shepherd character. And the thing about the shepherd is the flock knows the shepherd's voice, right? Scripture makes it very clear that like Jesus is the good shepherd. He leads the people and the sheep, they know his voice. And my job as the, as the shepherd of that community was to have the voice that the people knew, but it would be detrimental if all they knew was my voice and my name and my fame and my mm-hmm. acclaim. And they never, and, and and I never used it to preach and proclaim Jesus. So what I made my entire ministry about was, while I'm the the mouthpiece, I speak on behalf of God, and everything I do and everything I say at the end of the day, I always wanted to point back to Jesus. I wanted my life, my ministry, to be defined by who Jesus is. So so I said, like when I leave, more than anything else, I want my legacy to be. That when you think of Pastor Chris, you remember the guy who wouldn't shut up about Jesus. And if that's what people said, then I think I did my job well. Amen to that. Mm -hmm. So so here we find ourselves today, right? Question. Yes. All right. So making this move, Mm -hmm. all right, the wife. Yeah. Pastor's wife now. Pastor's wife. What did she think about that? That's a great question. You know, it. It, it was not solely a decision made on my own. Um, you know, we we wrestled with how would our daughters respond, um, how would our our family respond, how would her business respond. You know, she had she started this little out of the house bake shop called the Simple Scone that eventually went on to get a little bit of you know notoriety within the community. And were was able to, you know, be featured in, you know, a local coffee shop and bookstore. And there's a second coffee shop potentially in the works. And it's also, uh, it's also featured in my midsection. In yeah. Mine too. <laughs> Listen, I, I can't lose that freshman 15 to save my life. But then again, I just <laughs> ate two scones before I came in here. Um, but 
you know, the, the the thing about my wife and I love I love this about her is she's so content with being the helper in the background that she'll love people, she'll connect with people, she'll care about people and she does it so well. But she's okay to be in the background being a helper, being a carer, being, you know, kind of one of those people. She doesn't she doesn't want to be the person who's up front preaching, teaching, doing that. Um though she actually could if she really wanted to. Mm-hmm. Um she's actually got a ministry degree. Her undergrad degree is in ministry as well. Um she's very intellectual, very smart uh when it comes to ministry, but just has chosen to be in the background. So when we talked about it, we went over and eventually sometime after I had just made the decision to say yes, I got in touch with the current senior pastor of the church and my wife and I went over and had dinner with him and his wife and asked some of those questions of like, you know, what are the expectations of the pastor's wife? And was relieved to to hear kind of the role that that the current pastor's wife plays and how that it seems similar to the type of role Carrie would want to play being mm-hmm. in the background, helping, connecting, loving. But we've actually talked about, you know, we've got big lofty dreams of, you know, what God could potentially do and just trying to pray into not um, outpacing ourselves, but they have an education building there that's not currently being used and asking the question of what would it look like if we started a VPK program? You know, there's a lot of work that would go into that. That's that's like an entire year of planning and you know certifying and all of those things. So that might be year two on staff. But you know, thinking about those kind of things of ultimately for her, she wants to she wants to minister to the community, and that's that's the way she knows how. Mm-hmm. So she's content to play that role and being in the background. But but in the midst of it all, she she'll do whatever God is calling and placing on her heart to do. And mm-hmm. I think that's just kind of the right response is just just living into what God's calling us to do. Amen. Amen. Speaking of that, we'd like to thank uh, the Simple Scone for sending over the amazing scones tonight. And uh, also uh, Tracy Fagan is on and she's the one that got the scones out in Denver. Denver. Yeah, yeah I was going to say Colorado. Colorado. Yeah. So I remember, I remember uh, the... The uh, scone ministry is impacting Colorado. <laughs> How about that? Uh-huh. Well, thank you for all this love and the support. It I'm means... just glad the scones aren't going away. Yeah. So we are still figuring out all of the details of what it's going to look like. I, I will say this, you know, I, I was talking with, with uh, Fritz and Joe and, and Mike prior to us starting this podcast tonight. You know, one of the things that I, I get the privilege of doing is like my last Sunday on staff here in Claremont is June 6th. And June 7th, I go on, in essence, almost a sabbatical. Like I've got a few responsibilities of things that I have to do um, here in Claremont. I'll have to turn in my visa bill, you know, because Stephen will breathe down my neck if I don't. Um, oh, yeah. If he's listening. Hey, Stephen. We love you, man. Um <laughs> So I got to get that in. I got to do some of the paperwork kind of stuff, you know, handing my keys, things like that. I've got a a few worship meetings. I think we've got two scheduled worship meetings for the new church to talk about my first service. And then I've got, I don't know, two or three Florida conference events, right? So, I mean, there's still a handful of things I'll have to do. But I won't have to lead. I won't have to preach. I won't have to teach. I won't have to do all those things. So I can almost be on a little bit of a sabbatical for a little bit of time and I can refresh. And the more I've thought about it, the more excited I've gotten about the fact that in the midst of this all, um, I can I can slow down, I can lock in, listen to God, just you know, mm-hmm. spend some time with my Bible, um, and, and, and a good, awesome. and a good cup of coffee. Oh yeah, or, you bet. or a whole pot of coffee, and just you know, lock in and relax. And there's something to be said about the fact that there's there's so much joy. And slowing down and, and hearing from God, you know, that part of every one of our testimonies should be that, you know, we are giving God his due time every day. Um, I don't know. I don't know where that came from, but somebody needed to hear that. You know, somebody out there well, needs I'm to Well, I'm glad slow that down. you touched on it because I was going to circle back around to yeah. the testimony piece that you talked about yeah. right up front. 
Yeah. So everybody got one. Everybody's got a testimony. Everybody's got a story. Um, and would encourage anybody out there who's not had the opportunity to share it to, to do just that. Amen. I think I've shared in the past and, and, and if not, I'll repeat it. But when I was saved, right? When I, when I actually gave my life to Jesus and Jesus claimed me as his, his beloved own, I used to, I used to think my testimony was so unique. Oh, I was the kid who didn't grow up going to church. I was the re- the rebellious kid. I was smoking pot and, you know, selling it to my friends. And, you know, I was hanging out with all the tough kids. And I used to think that my testimony was so unique that, you know, people just want to hear it, you know, emphatic. And the older I've gotten and the more people that I've talked to, the more I've loved to hear people say, like, I grew up in a, in a household where mom and dad loved Jesus. They read the Bible to me. I, I grew up loving Jesus. I've gotten into the church and I've, I've loved Jesus with all of my heart for all of my life. Like, that's the kind of testimony I pray for my kids. But I know that every unique testimony and everything in between the, the wild rebel to the, you know, God honoring you know, child is valid. And should be shared because those stories will touch the lives of those who have the opportunity to hear it. So, mm-hmm. you know, don't discount your testimony. Yep. yep. Absolutely. Mikey, what do you got over there? I noticed you. Uh, I did. We have uh, a bunch of Facebook likes that happened in the last couple of weeks. All right. What, what? And we have Jazz Nick. Jazz Nick. Jazz Welcome Nick. to the GSR family. Welcome. And we have Paul Anderson. Paul Anderson, welcome. Welcome to the GSR family. And we have Jeff Wiggins. Jeff, welcome. Thank you for liking us. Then we have Patty Murray. Patty Murray, thank you. Thank, thank you for you, liking you. us. Welcome to the family. Wendell Portillo. Wendell, thank you. Thank you, Wendell. Welcome to the family. And our guest on the last one was. Tom Shatino. Tom Shatino. And if you had not heard his testimony, I urge you to go back to oh, yeah. 269 and, uh, so or uh, 279, 279. 279, excuse uh-huh. me, and listen to that testimony. Wow. That's all I can say is just uh-huh. wow. And then you have Jamie Morrison Bird. And she was uh, one of the Shatino's neighbors. And she actually worked at my store and she moved recently to. North Florida. Jamie, welcome to the GSR family. Thank you for liking us. We appreciate each and every one of you. Welcome. And finally, Pat Foster. Pat Foster, welcome. Thank you for liking us. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Yes, welcome to the GSR family. There you go. There you have it. Well, Chris, thank you so much for being here. I I was hoping that uh, I could snag you and get you in here one last time before you moved on. Well, I, I hope it's not the last time. Um, uh, me too. I mean, we can always call in, you know. Well, not no, only it's, that. It's, it's one hour and nine seven minutes, minutes away. Seven minutes for legal drivers. Right. And well, we all know Chris. <laughs> so, hey. I'm going there. We uh, we won't talk about Have mics people, will travel. Have mics will travel. Yeah. it. I appreciate it. I've, I've appreciated the friendship. The camaraderie with you know not only yourself, Fritz and, and Joe, but our whole team and you know everything. I look forward to what God has in store for the future. Amen to that. Um, but I, I know it's it's a new beginning. It's not an end. So um, I, I pray that things here will continue. That's what we've been talking about at church. Is um, things are called to continue. The church has continued for two thousand years, and we're going to continue to move forward into where God is leading us. Praise be to Jesus. So. I look forward to the next opportunity I get to come and be there a, you go. Be a ho- there, uh, that's the right words, right? That's the right words. <laughs> Jojo, what do you got over there? Oh, you know what? Got to got to play the role. So uh, for those of you that might want to come on the show, uh, get in touch. We'd love to hear from you. If you want to schedule your testimony, GodStoriesRadioTina at gmail.com. Uh, Tina's out tonight working, but she is still checking those emails. Don't be, uh, don't be afraid to get in touch, even if you're not sure how you want to share your testimony. There's lots of ways to do it. Here in studio, in person, you can write it in, you can call it in. There's a lot you can do. But uh, first step is send an email, express an interest, and, and Tina and the team will guide you through the rest. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. So professional. <laughs> 
love keep, that voice. Keep yeah, that track, voice right? is just just amazing. Mm-hmm. Well, Mikey, any final departing words over there? Well, I didn't really mean it that way, but I mean, you know, just, <laughs> for anything, the evening. anything for you want to say evening. before we end the podcast, uh-huh. I should say. Wow. <laughs> that was a, is it too soon? That was a bad joke. Sorry. Uh, well, where, where's your, where's your record scratch uh, sound effect over uh, there? I, yeah, I was looking, I was looking <laughs> for it. I, I'll say it again. Anyone, <laughs> anyone out there who is praying for the GSR family, thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you will continue. I will gladly take it. Thank you. Amen. We appreciate each and every one of you and everyone that's uh, prayed for Mikey and for this podcast. You know, and if you run over to www.godstoriesradio.com, we've got our website there and you can actually listen to all 280 episodes there. And there's a little button on the front page. And if the Lord so moves you, you can uh, drop a little change in the jar and it sure helps us to uh, continue to go. And grow. I can. And, uh, I can attest firsthand. I'm sitting here in the studio, and and your money goes to uh to to the mission that that you intended to. The studio is uh, continued to get uh, relevant upgrades that allow the team to uh, to continue the 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 mission on both this podcast and other similar Christian podcasts. So thank you for the donations. Thank you so much, Joe. And uh, thanks again to Chris for being here. We really love and appreciate you. And we appreciate yes. all of you. And. God bless to you. Well, thank you. Thank on you, your guys. New journey. We uh, we will continue to be in ministry with y'all. So thank you. Thank you. We, we love and appreciate you guys. Well, amen. Well, that about wraps it up for session 280. I'm Fritz. I'm Mike. I'm Chris. <laughs> no Tina. No Tina. <laughs> Good night, everybody. God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless.